Hello everyone. I hope you enjoyed the DEF CON 2023 and thank you for joining my session. Today, we're going to talk about a sweet little experiment I did last, last year, which is recreating an AirPlace clone with Algolia. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Luca Bonomi. I'm a senior front-end engineer here at Algolia. I've been working here for almost eight years now. And something I really love to do is to find ways to bend the technology to make it do stuff it was not meant to do. And specifically, oh, I bent Algolia to make it do stuff it was not designed for. But first, let's talk about the idea. You have to understand what's her place. If you, maybe you know, maybe you don't, it's okay, I'm gonna tell you. AirPlace is an initiative made by Reddit, which is basically a collaborative pixel art canvas where people could join their forces and get synchro and synchronize their forces to pick a color and put a pixel. So basically, they were creating uh, small or big art pieces uh, with that uh, canvas. So you pick a color, you pick your uh, pixel, you click on it, you apply your color. That's the theory. And it got me thinking, oh, what I could do to recreate this with Algolia? Well, I could take some of my records, which is, uh, as you see on the left, uh, traditionally served in a, in a list way, and put them in a grid uh, layout. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, in a grid, that's in theory how these record these records should be uh, presented to the users. Maybe you don't know what's a record. Uh, in Algolia's context, a record is, uh, refers to a small uh, JSON object that contains uh, attributes and values. These values can be strings, arrays of strings or numbers or whatever. It can be numbers, booleans. It can be everything you can give to a JavaScript object. That's a record. For our canvas, we will need some hits. So what's a hit? A hit, uh, it's the most important field in the search response. When you type in a query, the records that will match your query will be called hits and will be served uh, in the object, in the JavaScript object called hits. As you can see on my GIF, uh, when I type in a query, you can see the hits, uh, the matching hits uh, flowing in on the right. So. In Algolia's context, on the index, it's a record. In your front, when you serve it to the users, it's called a hit. So that's the basic idea. Now, what if each record was a pixel? On this view, you can see on the left, the traditional list view of records of your Algolia dashboard. And on the right, you can see I opened uh, this, uh, these items and you can see what's inside or partially what's inside, but yeah, it was just to tell you what was a record. So what if each record was a pixel? Oh, can we do that? Well, on the left, you have a bunch of um, lists of records and on the right, it's their uh, great counterpart. So let's take the second example. You can see that the first record is red, then green, blue, yellow, purple, and black. Served in a grid, they should follow each other and go from the first red, then green, blue, yellow, purple, black, and so on. Extending this concept, we could think that every record will be gray and some of them will be blue and served in a grid, it could show a beautiful smiley face. So that's the theory. It should work. No, we will start making the app. So to make the app, I started by opening, uh, up, by setting up an index. Uh, and uh, so I went to my Algolia dashboard, I created my new index and I'm super lazy. So I decided to open VS Code. I created a JSON, a small JSON object with BG color ID and object ID. I duplicated a uh, hundred times. I bumped, uh, I increased the ID for uh, each uh, object. And then I had an array of hundred records. There's plenty of ways you can <clears throat> send records to Algolia. That's the one I choose to manually uh, write them because it was the start of my experiment. It was good enough. Now that I am my index, I could iterate over my hits like I did uh, on the left code sample. 
I use React, I get all my hits. So imagine that the all hits um, variable contains all the hits. I iterate over uh, over them, and then I, I return a div which uh, use the background color of the hit BG color attribute. Remember, uh, my uh, record got uh, BG color attribute, and that's the one I pass to the div. I put the numbers again, so you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, blah, blah. They should be ordered. The reality is that they're not, and that's okay. It's actually because uh, they're messed up and unordered because of an Algolia feature, which is super nice by default. It's the default ranking formula or ranking criteria. Algolia does that by default because when you open a new, when you want to create a new search, you don't want to spend too much time fine tuning your config to have the best results. So Algolia take care of this for you. That's super nice but that's definitely not what we want or at least what i want on my application because i want to have them sorted um, logically by idea so i'm going to break that feature and what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to fine tune the settings directly on the uh, engine to avoid front-end work because i could do it on the front end but it will be less performant i guess and I can do it directly on the dashboard. So let's go from this. So I, I want to prevent the random rendering. <clears throat> so I go in my config, I remove the default ranking formula. And instead I add a custom ranking, which is the ID that I sort in an ascending way. And you know what? It was nice because it worked. Now I had my pixels sorted by ID and uh, I started to see my beautiful smiley face, but you can see that it's missing an eye. Oh, can we add an eye to that poor guy? Well, go back to the um, iteration. I added a new uh, a few lines and I added the onclick attribute. You can see that onclick, it will color the div with the picked color that you would have picked before. And at the same time, it will index this new object into Algolia and still using the style attribute with the background. That's the BG color of uh, the div. And you can see on the GIF that it works. I go on my div, I click on it, boom, it's blue. Super nice. Which means that basically my app was alive. And I, I used the step I mentioned, uh, mentioned above, and I had a super simple canvas with 100 pixels. I sent it to people. They started playing with it. It was super nice. I enlarged it to 1,000 1000 uh, pixels. But as you can see on this GIF, I noticed some issues here. I'm drawing a cross, but as soon I'm going to reach for another color, the cross will disappear. And that's because by default, Algolia will cache the, the response, the API response into your client. And that's because in a normal uh, situation, your index doesn't change that much. Uh, it will probably be updated every once uh, per week uh, or every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I needed to get rid of this uh, nice feature of, of Algolia. So I started working on my improvements. On the improvements, we will see how I fix the cache issue, how I fix the security issues, how I made the canvas bigger. I also created a super small and simple user counter. And finally, I'm going to show you a super nice feature called the replay. Let's start with the cache. A colleague of mine told me that Algolia was also uh, exposing something called uh, uh, create null cache. Uh, so remember, by default, Algolia will cache your query, super nice features, feature, but that's not what I want. I want to have uncached response every time I type something, type something because I want uh, to have interactiveness, uh, real-timeness, and everything. So I don't want cache. I use null cache, super nice. It worked. Thank you. Then the security. When I first shared my canvas, whenever someone clicked or when I fetched my hits, you could see the API key I used. Uh, I used uh, an API key, uh, which is the admin API key, because in a, in a normal situation, you would want to use either a search uh, API key to search into your index. But I want to index and to re-index and to modify my, my uh, records. So I needed either um, a key with an API write, uh, write access but I went the full way and I used the admin API key. So it was really sensible. I don't want people to uh, use that API key to clean my canvas. I, I wanted to keep it for, for me. So I, I used uh, Next.js for the API routes. So I could store my API key into Versal's uh, uh, environment variable. And when I request my API route, it will use that API key. 
The only downside is that it makes several API calls. Um, uh, so the first one is the API root index data that then which uh, which then will call the Algolia API to index that new object. But that was okay. Uh, I could not see my API key leaking anymore in the DevTools, so that was perfect. It worked, API key stored, project secured. Now the user counter. I use something called socket.io, uh, which, uh, so I uploaded a node script in uh, Heroku, super simple. You can see parts of it uh, uh, on connection. If the socket emit user connected, I bump the number of users. And if the user disconnect, I decrease that number of users. As you can see in the small GIF, the, no the number of connected users goes from two to three and three to two. At maximum time, I think we were 18 people playing on the canvas. That was super nice to see. Then I decided to go for optimistic UI approach. That's because remember, I told you uh, because of next API root and then the call to Algolia, the, from the moment you clicked on the pixel and the moment the pixel changed, uh, like it was re-indexed into Algolia with the proper color, it could vary, vary the time from 500 milliseconds to one second and a half. It was quite long. So optimistic UI approach is a way to mimic an instant action. So you do not wait for the API response to color that pixel and it feels instant. You can Google about it, super nice uh, way of working and uh, your users will thank you. Because if I would not do this, uh, it, you would have difficulties to draw on the, on the canvas. Then I decided to enlarge my canvas. So here you can see um, uh, different indexes I have uh, in my Algolia application, in my Algolia dashboard, but we'll see them later. So remember, I went from 100 pixels to 1,000 pixels to 4,020 pixels. But then I started uh, noticing that it was no longer really interactive. And that's because by default, and thank you Algolia for this, uh, Algolia will uh, cap your maximum hit per page to 1K. I needed more than this. Super nice feature, but once again, uh, that's not what I want. Because imagine, if you have 10K results on a page, your page will, be not, will not be performant, it will be slow. Algolia handles, handles that for you. Thank you, Algolia. But I need something else. What I need, actually, is the browse method. The browse method, usually it's used to um, uh, transfer index from index A to index B, uh, or to get all your hits and put them somewhere. You don't want to make search experiences with the browse index. Uh, with the browser uh, objects, but rather a simple uh, Algolia method like uh, search or whatever. But I used the browse object because I needed all my hits. So I went a uh, rough way and uh, I used the set interval and every 600 milliseconds, I was refetching all my hits uh, from my index and redisplaying them uh, on my canvas with the iteration. And it worked well. I could see people uh, drawing on the canvas at the same time as me. And uh, I could see all the pixel getting uh, updated uh, every 600 milliseconds, whereas before it was not the case. So I could go from 4,020 pixels to 16,080 and to the final form of, of 36,180 pixels. If you if you look at the Pikachu, it will always stay on the top left corner because the way I uh, organize the grids is several grids uh, next to each other. And yeah, it's not just enlarging the number of pixels. It's really, there's a modulo algorithm to replace the proper canvas at the proper places. And that was super nice. But then it got me thinking, what can I do to replay the whole thing from the beginning? And you're in luck because I thought about it ahead and I actually created a replay, um, a replay uh, application. So it's a new canvas, it's a new index, sorry, that use only uh, the, the, the records for the snapshots. So basically every 10 minutes or so, I take a snapshot of the all of all the pixels. So it's um, it's not a visual snapshot. It's really like all the pixels are stored in an array and I take that array, that array and I index it with a timestamp. And if 10 minutes later, I redo a snapshot and there is the slightest pixel off uh, or different from the previous snapshot, I will re-index that new one with the Unix time, timestamp so that I'm making sure that I don't index every time the same image but rather I re-index every time there is a change. That works well. But you see these two small screenshots on the left, 
By default, Algolia got a super nice feature, which is it's telling you your average record size that can actually impact your front and your loading time and your performances when uh, when you serve those hits. So I needed to find a way to reduce a bit the snapshot object, which I did. I, I removed the hash sign. I went from six digit hexadecimal to three digit hexadecimal, and it was better. My record size was less uh, big and it was good to use. Um, it was super nice. And it was actually working. As you can see here, uh, you can see the replay. It's really, um, well, it's not really good quality, but you can see from uh, the day I created the replay to the last day, uh, you can see everything replay. Um, I have a better uh, video for this. So here it is, let me play it. And you can actually see the usage of the timestamp. I used a uh, range input on top, it's uh, not really visible, but I use a range input to iterate over my different uh, snapshots. So there is approximately 300 snapshots. And with the range, I can easily go from one to the other. And uh, it was super nice. I can revisit the snapshot at the time uh, I want. It was really, 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 really nice. And I showed it to people. People liked it. It was uh, really playful to uh, re-witness the whole thing from the beginning. We had so much fun. And uh, yeah, I was really happy. I could re -see, I could see again the pixel war that happened with all the employees. Uh, it was super uh, playful. And uh, I think it was uh, a needed feature. So now it's your turn. You can scan this QR code or visit algolia-canvas.versal.app and unleash your creativity. Create some drawings, color these pixels, but please, pretty please, I know how internet behave or rather do not behave. I ask you to stay uh, respectful. Don't draw anything sensible or anything that we will have to remove because we will probably use that canvas I showed you uh, for uh, DEF CON uh, social posts or anything. It can be useful for us. It's, uh, it's meant to be fun not uh, not uh, bad so please refrain from drawing anything really bad or we will have no choice but killing the app that's not what we want thank you for listening to my talk about that crazy experiment i did with algolia um, i guess you didn't knew you could do such things with algolia but you can uh, we have a super nice plan of 1 million records a free plan where you can play with 1 million records so go crazy with it do not hesitate to reach out on Twitter at LukeVG if you have any questions. I'm here to answer your questions. Scan this QR code or Google Algolia uh, Our Place because I wrote an article about it last year. And I wish you a nice end of DEF CON. Unleash your creativity, draw on that canvas. And once again, thank you for listening to me and enjoy your DEF CON. Goodbye.